turbulent stock market reports to ongoing political battles over job creation, it's painfully clear that the United States economy is far from stable. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jessica Arp, in for Neil Heinen. While it's common to talk about the economy strictly in terms of how it affects the adult population, often the effects on children are overlooked. But a comprehensive study has just been released that takes a close look at how Wisconsin's children have been impacted by the recent and some might say ongoing recession. Here to talk about the findings of that study, among other topics, is the executive director of the Wisconsin Council on Children and Families, Ken Taylor. Ken, welcome to For the Record this morning. Thank you for having me. Well, why don't you tell us, first of all, this uh, Wisconsin and Council on Children and Families this year celebrated your 130th anniversary, right? Right. A and it was established in 1881. So why don't you tell people who maybe aren't familiar with it a little bit more about what you do? Well, the Wisconsin Council on Children and Families is a statewide research, public education, and advocacy organization focusing on children and families. As you said, we're 130 years old. We're the oldest organization of our type in the country. So we work on a wide range of issues. Uh, we're a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. And we work on issues like health care and early care and education and juvenile justice and child welfare. and. Uh, and poverty reduction as well. Right. Can you tell us a little bit more about some of maybe the programs or the things that you support? I mean, you talk about a wide range of things there, but what, what kind of specific right. things do you do? So, for example, uh, we work hard to keep the Badger Care Plus program for health care insurance strong. Uh, we know that there are some challenges there, but we also know the importance of that program in tough economic times and for children so that they can grow up healthy. We work on early care and education. So there's, a, there's an important public program called Wisconsin Shares that supports early care and education. And we're helping uh, our public sector counterparts to make sure that that's as strong and high quality a program as they can possibly put on the streets of our state. Sure. Well, as we, you know, the, the couple things you mentioned there, Wisconsin Shares and Badger Care, of course, the two things that have been discussed a lot in this budget environment, how has the budget really affected what you do and the priorities of the things that you put forward for the council? Well, in these tough economic times, uh, tough budgetary times, there are uh, significant cuts to all of those programs. And that's something that we're very concerned about because we know that the investments in children and families work. They're good for children and families, but they're also good for our long-term economic health. And so as we see the programs slowly being cut back, that's of high concern to us and we're trying to work to strengthen them. What kind of things are you, uh, what kind of advocacy are you doing on that, on that front to try to really say, you know, Badger Care Plus and Wisconsin Shares and those kind of things are important. How do you really sort of push that agenda in an environment where people are saying there's just no money to do it with? Right. Well, I mean, one of the challenges is that we know that there's less money, but I would disagree that there's no money. It's really about our priorities and the values that we that we have as a state. And so we believe as child and family advocates that these are programs that are worth investing in and actually pay long-term positive dividends. Um, we also believe that we should all share in the sacrifice uh, that that's being asked of us and so we shouldn't balance the budget on the backs of children and families. Do you, do you think people understand the, I mean when you hear the names of some of these programs, if you're not a part of them, you may not know what they do. I mean do you think people really understand uh, the importance of these programs to, you know, community life in the state? Well, I think that uh, we all have some work to do to try to help people understand the importance of these programs and that I think the economic recession is showing us that it's not just for other people. There are many people who never thought that they would need public support, uh, that people that were donating to food pantries two years ago uh, now are unfortunately clients of those same food pantries. Uh, we've lost uh, 160,000 uh, people lost insurance through their employers. Uh, because of job loss. So the Badger Care program helps support some of those workers who have fallen into poverty, uh, have the health care that they need. So I think that people are, are more and more understanding that these programs are not just for, uh, for other people, they're for all of us. For those of us who are lucky enough to not need them, uh, we know that the long-term implications of not providing high quality early care and education or high quality health care, it costs us all more in the long run. So it's, these are important programs to continue to invest in now. Has that increased the need for what 
you do what you do every day, the, the council sort of advocacy role? I think it does. There's, um, there's more and more need out there. And so, unfortunately, children still don't have a voice in the political process. Um, and so we have to continue to be that voice. As their need goes up, the importance of uh, organizations like WCCF and other advocacy organizations also increases. Yeah, you talk about uh, the impact of the recession on children and there has been a report now that's that's been done, the 2011 Kids Count data book we, that is out. This is done by the Annie Casey Foundation. It's, it's basically a profile, as you say, of, a, of um, measures of child well-being. Is that how you describe it? Right, so uh, what they do is they look at national data and take 10 important data elements and look at each state and combine them to see what the overall ranking is of each state. And so Wisconsin has historically been a top tier state. Uh, I'm not a big fan of individual rankings, but we're number 12 for those, of, uh, those folks who are interested in that. But I think the important thing is that we're in the top tier. Uh, and we are along other states in the upper Midwest, uh, like Minnesota and Iowa, and also states in the New England states tend to rank highly on child well-being. When you look around the nation, the, the lowest performing states when it comes to child well-being are across the southern portion of our, of our nation. Sure. Well, we want to talk a little bit more about this Kids Count data uh, in Wisconsin's ranking, of course. We will be right back this morning with For the Record. Welcome back this morning to For the Record. We are talking today about kids and the recession. We're here with Ken Taylor, who's the executive director of the Wisconsin Council on Children and Families. Well, we were talking uh, this morning about the Kids Count Study, a measure of well-being. Wisconsin ranking sort of in the upper tier of this, which Correct. is obviously good news. Tell Very us what news. the good news is uh, in this study about Wisconsin. So the data shows that we're improving on a number of areas of child well-being, which is, which is great news. So we're improving on decreasing child deaths and teen deaths, uh, lowering teen birth rate, lowering high school dropout, and lowering the percent of babies uh, born with low birth weight. So all of that is, is good news. Yeah, where is that coming from? I mean, why do you think that it is that we do well in those specific areas? Well, I think that historically we've invested in children and families, and that's, that's why we do well. We were talking earlier about uh, the Badger Care Plus program for health care, uh, investments in early care and education, K-12 education, uh, vocational education, the UW system, uh, we've invested in things that make the economy strong and make children well and lead good lives. And so that's, that's what I think attributes to how we've been doing recently on those, uh, those important points of statistics. And some of this is about health care and, and, and you know, prenatal care, you're talking about babies with lower birth weight, we seem to do well in that area. Um, it, some of this is about parenting too, right? Sure, and so, um, so supporting parents to be better parents, we know that parents are their kids' first teachers, for example, uh, but we also know that when people are first-time parents, uh, we all have things to learn. I know that my wife and I had things to learn parenting our own child. And so supporting parents who may not uh, know the, the things that they should be doing or have access to all the supports that they need is an important thing for us to do. And there are important uh, things that families can do for that, but there's also an important role for the public sector. Sure. Uh, we wanted to talk, uh, obviously there's, but there's good news, sometimes there's bad news too. Right. Tell us, uh, you know, one of the, the things that we're talking about, kids in the recession here, 42% increase in Wisconsin children living in poverty, going from 12% in the year 2000 to 17% in 2009. That is double the average increase nationally. What, right. What's going on here? Right, well, uh, I don't have uh, the magical solution to the challenges of, of increasing poverty. I think that the, the national recession is hitting us. One of the, the important things to note is that we're still below the national average, but we're losing ground. Uh, and so seeing the poverty rate double for children is, is very troubling. Uh, the other thing that's troubling is that it's not 
equally shared across all of our demographic groups. And so when you look at the African American poverty rate for children, it's four times the rate of Caucasian children. And so there's as bad as that 42% increase is, it's even deeper in certain segments of our society. Sure, and obviously some of that could have things to do with unemployment. The uh, Another sort of measure from this study, the percentage of children whose parents lack secure on sh secure employment went from 22% in 2009 to 27 or I'm sorry 22% in 2000 to 27% in 2009. Oh, I, I mean that that has to be a big factor. I mean we we think about how it affects parents and how it affects people without a job, but it certainly affects the children as well. Sure. So uh, you know, children are part of families. They have caregivers that need to be able to support them. And when those caregivers lose their jobs, and you know, so many children are in families that uh, are either unemployed, have parents unemployed, or underemployed, which is another challenge of people who are uh, part-time jobs or have been rehired at much lower wages, perhaps not with health care and things like that. Um, that is an important. Uh, impact on those children, on their stability. So uh, if you can imagine a, a child trying to go to school, but knowing that those sorts of pressures are at home and they're not quite sure uh, what their situation is going to be at home, uh, it just makes it harder for them to learn. And, and so that's very challenging. To have a stable home life, right. really. Well, you know, when you talk about homes, too, that, I mean, foreclosures, we've heard a lot about foreclosures and, and connections to unemployment since 2007, the number of children affected by foreclosure, 59,000. I mean, again, we talk about the adults, but we don't talk about the kids who are losing their houses. Either. Right. So if you can imagine a Lambeau field full of children, that's roughly the number of children who have lost their homes due to foreclosure in the last few years. And so when you think about that and you think about educational attainment uh, and you think about them doing, uh, doing well in school and getting a good trajectory, it's very difficult. It's difficult for the adults in their lives. It's difficult for the school teachers who are dealing uh, with the challenges that these face. And so it has a, a ripple effect uh, throughout families and throughout communities when things like that are happening to children. When you look at all of these numbers, whether it's about foreclosure or unemployment and, and the children that are affected here, is it that the national economy is just affected everyone? I mean, is it that this the a national economy or is there something going on in Wisconsin that it's affecting kids this way? Well, I think that it's, it's actually larger than just the national economy. Uh, it's really a, a global economy these days. And so things, and so we're more interconnected than we've ever been. So things that are happening in Greece are affecting things happening in the U.S. And then things that are happening across the country in the U.S. are then uh, affecting us here in Wisconsin. Uh, and affecting us here in, in Dane County. So, um, so it's, it's all interconnected, and I think that that's one of the important things uh, that comes out for me from this data is that because the, the challenges are big and they're interconnected, then our solutions need to be at all those levels as well. Right, I've, and it, you know, your organization has said recently that you believe that there's been a disinvestment in the things that maybe would have combat combated these type of statistics do you is is it that you know is the, it does it need to be that targeted are there things that we're not doing that we should be doing well I think that historically we've done um, you know most of the things that we should be doing of course we could always do it a little bit better and a little more efficiently and get you know focus on outcomes for kids and make sure that we're actually achieving what we set out to do but we have always been a state that invests in children and families, uh, which is why we've been in the upper tier for child well-being. What we've seen recently uh, is disinvestment in that. And just looking at our most recent budget, the, many of the cuts are coming uh, in the areas of investment in children and families. Gotcha. OK, well, we want to talk more about what to do next, what we do, uh, you know, what, what's coming down the pike. So we will uh, be right back this morning with For the Record.
morning, welcome back to For the Record. You're looking here at some information on an upcoming uh, forum. A great start for kids, a wise investment for Wisconsin, is being hosted by the Wisconsin Council on Children and Families. It is Tuesday, September 27th from 11.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Monona Terrace. There's, of course, more information you can find on the Wisconsin Council for Children and Families website at WCCF. Dot org. We are here with the Wisconsin Council on Children's Families Executive Director this morning talking more about how kids are doing in the state of Wisconsin. And we talked sort of a lot about all the kind of bad news here, but the question really is, what's next? What, kind, what Can you talk about this forum and where what that role that plays in it? Right. Well, I've been speaking quite a bit about early care and education, and one of the reasons is is that it's really important for children and their learning, but it also has a long-term positive economic impact. And so that's what the purpose of this forum is about, is to explain that to people who, who attend uh, exactly how it is that the early care and education supports that we provide not only help kids in the short run, uh, get them ready for school and allow their parents to, to go to work and be good employees themselves, but it also has a long-term positive impact on the economy. So for example, uh, there's a Nobel laureate from the University of Chicago called Jim Heckman, and he, his research shows that it's really the best investment we can make. Some, some studies show a 17 to 1 return on every dollar that's invested in early care and education because it helps children get ready for school, which helps them be uh, better readers at grade level, and then it, it has long-term positive impacts, uh, lower levels of of incarceration as adults and things like that. So this forum highlights the importance of early care and education as an economic development tool as well as uh, important for kids themselves. When you talk about early care and education, what is it that you mean there? Is it 4K? Is it sending your kids to daycare? I mean, what, well, what are people gonna learn? It's the full, the full range. So it's basically from birth to five uh, or birth to, to school. And so 4K is a part of that. Child care is a part of that. Parents play a role in that as well. Uh, but we know that high quality child care has a really positive long-term effect. And so when, when I'm talking about early care and education, I'm really talking about that birth to five population. So if I'm a parent at home and I'm seeing this, is this something that I'm gonna wanna come to you to learn about what I should be doing with my child that may help things? Well, it's not so much uh, a hands-on parenting sort of uh, forum. It's more about things at the system level and what we can do to help uh, lay the groundwork for good, high quality early care and education. So we're also gonna be learning from experts from Maryland about good work that they've done. Uh, there's, a, there's a great program here in Wisconsin called Educare that's really a, uh, a beacon of high quality and so we're gonna learning, be learning from them about how they provide high quality care and, and what works for them. So it's really more at the systems level, and so it's really more targeted for professionals in the early care world, but also for business people and for local elected officials and state elected officials, because it's important that they understand this not only as the right thing to do for kids, but also as a tool for economic development. Sure, a new program in the state of Wisconsin is the Young Star, the child care rating system. Does that play a role in this? I mean, is that one of the groundwork kind of things that you're talking about? It certainly is. So we know that um, that high quality care has the, the biggest net impact, positive impact on children and families. Unfortunately, not all the care that currently exists is as high quality as we would like it to be. And so the Young Star program uh, creates a rating system so that parents know the, the quality of the program that they're, they're enrolling their children in. So there's a, there's a market mechanism so that parents can, can choose and they will uh, hopefully choose higher quality. But if they know what the you know, whether it's a four star compared to a two star, if they don't know that, it's hard to make that decision for them. Once they know that, uh, we think that parents will start to gravitate towards higher quality care. But it's also to help support the, the care providers uh, so that they can under, better understand what high quality is and get some support so that they can get there. So that if they are starting out as a two star program, uh, there's a pathway for them to improve quality, um, you know, should they take it. We've talked some about the budget um, today and how it's impacted some of the programs that you uh, believe are really important to the state. You did this project called 31 Ways in 31 Days that was on your website. Can right. you tell, uh, talk a little bit about that project and sort of 
what kind of awareness you were able to raise with that? Well, the purpose of that project was to get a little bit more concrete and discreet because when we're talking about the budget, it's there's very large numbers and it's very complex and it's kind of hard to get your hand or your hands around. So our attempt for this program, uh, 31 ways in 31 days, is every day in for the month of July, we said, well, this is one discrete program or one discrete thing that is being affected by the budget one way or the other. Sure, and that's something you can find if you go to your website, wccf.org, is exactly. that right? Yeah. Yes. Hey, once you move past the budget you know, as it stands, what can be done next? Obviously the budget's the big place where you know, the money goes out for the next two years, but what kind of things are, do you advocate for? What's next? I mean, once we see this, the impact of the recession on children, what, what can we do now? Well, I think that the advocacy needs to continue. The budget uh, is a, is a long-term process, and it starts the day after the last one is passed. And so helping politicians and the people who are voting for the budget understand what their constituents' priorities are is something that needs to happen regularly and often. And so, so having people communicate with their elected officials on, a, on an ongoing basis uh, and keeping that steady strain uh, because there's so many different issues that come across our elected officials' desks uh, and so many special interests out there that have professional lobbyists that are, that are coming uh, into their office on a regular basis that the, sometimes the, the, the regular people and the, the issues that are important to them sometimes get lost in the process. So I would say uh, you know, keep, keep at the advocacy uh, for the things that are important to you, whether it's a, a specific program that benefits you and your family, whether it's something that is important to you as far as your community goes uh, and as far as the state. And even if it's not your own child that benefits, uh, we actually are all in this together. And as I said earlier, the economy is all interconnected. And so uh, it's important for all of us to address these issues collectively. Yeah, and very quickly here, you are having community conversations about this across the state, right? Right, so we're visiting communities across the state to try to hear from them to make sure that we understand the reality of what's going on out there across our state. Sure, absolutely. Well, a lot of good information. We have uh, a little bit more to talk about here. So we will be back uh, in just a few minutes with For the Record. My thanks to Ken Taylor for coming in today with a lot of food for thought. For more information on the upcoming early education form you're seeing on your screen or the other topics we discussed, check out the website of the Wisconsin Council on Children and Families at www.wccf.org. Neil will be back next week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We will see you next Sunday.